Red hot. Red hot fish. Hot run, man. They just don't give up. What a battle. What a battle. Another fish on that Arctic fox fly. That's a chunky rainbow. Another awesome Elmanor rainbow. Another studly fish. Very heavy, beautiful. It's chrome bright. Nice square tail. It's a beauty. Middle of the day, a little bit of chop on the water. That fish was six feet deep. And uh, once again, smack that blue and white Arctic fox fly. That's, uh, that's gotten hit several times today. I've got two fish on it. And each fish I get seems to be a little bit bigger. So we'll keep on trolling that for sure. Howdy folks, Cal Kellogg here. As you can see from that clip, trolling flies are super effective. Um, if you've been reading my work in the fish sniffer or watching my videos here on YouTube, you know over the past year, I've spent more and more time trolling Arctic fox flies and flies from other manufacturers as well. And I really like the results. Um, I'm by no means an expert but I learn more every time I hit the water with a fly. And uh, I'm starting to get a lot of questions, emails. I've even gotten some phone calls asking me about trolling flies. Heck, I even had the fish sniffer publisher, Paul Neeland, who's been trolling for trout. And he's an excellent troller. He's been trolling for trout for a long time. And he called me up the other day and, and gave me a grilling about how I troll flies, when I use flies, all, all that kind of stuff. So. I thought we'd take time today to go over pretty much everything I know about fly trolling, how I store them, how I rig them, how I run them, all that kind of stuff. So let's jump in. First of all, when do I use them? The question is, when do I not use them? And uh, the answer is I, I use them a lot. I use them off a of downrigger. I use them in deep water. I use them in shallow water. Probably use them in shallow water more than in deep water. I really like to run them off my lead core rigs. Super effective. Um, trolling speeds, you could definitely up the speed by manipulating your rigging. But in general, let me show you a fly. And I just showed this one on the channel the other day, but uh, we'll use it for an illustration. Here, here's how it's rigged. Let's talk about the rig to start with. This is eight pound fluorocarbon. You can use 10 pound. I mean, we're targeting big fish. This might be 10 pound, but anyway, I use eight to 10 pound. That little cup you see there right, right over my face, that is a action disc or, or as I call them, a wiggle disc. Um, and that's a small size. That's what gives the fly the action. Now, right here, right on the nose of the fly, that's a bobber stop. And I can slide that up the line if I want to, whoa, my, my wiggle disc got away from me. If I want that wiggle disc to uh, sit not right against the nose of the fly, if I want it to be a little distance away from the fly, I can do that. So, and that, that bobber, bobber stop is important. When I'm trolling slow, I want that to shoot down the line again. When I'm trolling slow, I want that wiggle disc, disc or action disc right on the nose of the fly. That's for one and a half to two miles an hour. But if I want to increase my speed, let's say on my other rod, I want to run a Rapala or a Speedy Shiner and I, I want to kick up the speed a little bit, create a little distance there 
and it's going to nullify some of the effect of that action disc, which at, you know, two plus miles an hour, it's going to be shaking pretty violently. So if you want a little subtler presentation that you can run at higher speeds, you should use that, uh, that bobber stop and slide that up the line a little bit. Now, these bobber stops, I think they come from... Uh, Eagle Claw! <laughs> I was stumped there for a second. And what they do, they come on this little, come on a little plastic button like that. Let me hold this up closer. Hold it in front of my hat there. As you can see there, beyond the end of those two red bobber stops, there's a little hole in the wire there. Stick your leader through that hole and then you slide that stop onto the line. So, anyhow, first thing I do, I take my line, I put on my action disc, I put on my bobber stop, and then I tie on my fly using a Palomar knot, okay? Make my leader about 48 inches long, okay? I tip the leader either with a overhand loop knot, or in this case, I have a little tiny, I don't know if you can see it there, a little tiny uh, ball bearing swivel. Of course, this, this bigger trolling swivel is on the end of my line, so I snap it on there. So in this case, I've got the fly, the bobber stop, the wiggle disc, 48 inches of material, ending in a high quality barrel swivel. So that's my basic rigging, eight to, pound, eight to 10 pound fluorocarbon line. So it's pretty simple. Um, now, when I, when I get ready to go fishing, I don't necessarily wanna rig those on the boat. Maybe I wanna change colors, maybe, you know, who knows? I wanna change stuff, so what I do is I get most of the colors of flies that I think drop something there that I think I'm gonna use, and I've just got this this uh, piece of closed cell foam. And what I've done, I've pre-rigged them. You see the little discs back there. That's where the discs and barrel swivels are, and uh, I just keep them like that. So you know, if I if I want a black fly, got one right there. Gold fly, you know, standard kind of two each up patterns here. So. I pre-rig them, I can snap them on, snap them off, store them, they stay safe. I'm always ready to fish, ready for action, ready to go, ready for those big trout. That big that big rainbow right there, seven pounds. I keep talking about it, but, but I can't forget about it. That came on an Arctic Fox black and white fly last October at Lake Elmanor, trolled just, just under the surface. So let's, uh, let's finish up at least with the Arctic Fox flies by talking a little bit about color. Now, just, just like anything else, I prefer to start off matching what the fish might be biting on. And if I'm at Folsom, Shasta, Lake Elmanor, I want something that looks like a bait fish. Um, this is the fly you saw me catching fish on at Lake Elmanor. It's, you know, it's bluish grayish on the back. It's got some flash, got some white. Well, Elmanor is full of pond smelt, and when that's drawn through the water, give it a little action. It looks just like a pond smelt, has a large prominent eye on it. Um, it just screams bait fish. Fish feed on bait fish, show them that. If they're eating threadfin shad, that's a great pattern. Um, your, uh, your whites, dark over lights, stuff like that, those are going to work anywhere there's bait fish. So now if you get up higher in the Sierras or or to you know different lakes where the the fish feed on tui chubs, they feed on those those olive colored uh, sculpin stuff like that. Bust out some flies that have some olive integrated in them. Early in the morning, go with black. Targeting brown trout, go with black. They love black. So, anyhow. Here's a pretty snazzy color that I like to run up in the high Sierras. Anytime I would reach for a brown trout pattern or a gold pattern cast master or something like that, bust out this gold fly. That, that's just, just beautiful. Haven't caught a fish on it yet. Haven't run it much yet. Um, and here's another one. Is that the same? Uh, this one's a little bit different. This one integrates a little bit of red in it. And uh, see that big trout up, up there, up above me on the wall, that one has a Mickey Finn colored uh, Arctic Fox fly pinned in its jaw. So anyway, start off with the bait fish stuff, then get bright. That's when you want to go bright. Heck, they even make those Arctic Fox flies. I've got this one in my box here. I haven't run this one yet, but uh, 
Chartreuse, baby. That'll catch their eye, that's for sure. Chartreuse. Another one I really love. This one got kind of beat up. I was fishing this one at Davis. I caught four fish in a row on this rainbow trout pattern one. So anyway, get some different colors. They're pretty durable. They will take some wear and tear, but they, they will get beat up, chewed up a little bit when you're catching fish, but what the heck, you're catching fish. So those are my Arctic fox flies. That's a pretty big pattern. I'm looking for big fish most of the time when I'm pulling these. Now, let's say you're out, the big stuff isn't working. Okay, you're up in the high Sierras. You don't want to bomb them with a three inch fly. You want to downsize. Can you still troll a fly? Absolutely. So, and there's a couple of different things I run. One, well, one is you're just your standard, regular old woolly booger. I run that the same way with the action disc, but when I'm using a small fly like this, I'll use that bobber stop. I'll give myself a couple inches just to just to moderate the action a little bit. You don't want to dominate a fly like this with that action disc right on its nose. So anyway, woolly booger, great pattern. Um, it's a little bit smaller, a little bit subtler, very buggy looking. And I'll down, I'll, I'll, I'll drop down my speed when I'm pulling something like this too. I'll hit that one mile an hour to 1.5 with it rather than the, you know, the 1.5 to two. So just slow down a little bit. This is an excellent choice if your second rod is armed with a threaded worm. Finally, and this is a fly. I've caught a bunch of fish on these, and these are just fun to fish. This is a woolly booger from Max Lure, but it's unique. Look at there. It has a smile blade on it, and that blade, it will turn nicely at less than one mile an hour. Now, when I'm running the smile blade flies, I don't use the wiggle disc. I mean, I got all kinds of flash and vibration up here. So they come in all colors. That is a rusty, rust-colored pattern there. Um, here's a great one for Lake Davis. This is your olive colored pattern. So, but it's significantly smaller than your uh, your standard Arctic fox fly. So just, it's a, it's a lot smaller. And get it in the water, it's a lot more compact. It's a lot buggier, but you're still getting some flash and vibration from that smile blade. So you need to get some trolling flies. You need to get some little ones. You need to get some Arctic fox, some big ones. And, uh, Spend a little time fooling around with them. Gain a little confidence. And when you do, I guarantee you, they are going to become one of your go-to offerings. The trout respond really well to flies, and not a lot of guys are pulling them. So the trout aren't seeing a lot of flies presented that way, and uh, that makes them even more effective. So anyway, I've jabbered long enough. Thanks for watching my channel. Please hit that subscribe button down there, and I'll catch you next time on YouTube. Thanks for watching me, folks. This is Kel Kellogg signing off.